I'm Abby and I'm Tapnet Stitcher and I'm back again already. Who would have thought? I uh, have still not cleaned up from when I filmed yesterday, but I realized I have a lot of stuff that I didn't get around to showing you and I'm going to be reorganizing all, all this stuff around me. So like, why not go ahead and just make a bigger mess before I put it all away to be clean? Right? M made, make sense? So I've got, got my tea. I've got a cat somewhere. I think he's eating dinner part two. He is the weirdest cat. He's the least picky eater. He's always hungry. He's always ready to eat. He's a giant cat, as you uh, may have seen. I'm sure he'll appear at some point. But every once in a while, he'll decide that he doesn't want his food, and he, it, he's like just suddenly the pickiest eater for like 20 minutes, and he'll protest that he's starving, even though it's the same food he had for breakfast. Same, like, from the same can. I guess it's colder because it's been in the fridge, but whatever. He's, he's just so weird. Um, so he'll just protest and protest and then he'll finally take a bite and realize like, oh, I like this after all. So now he's finally eating his dinner. Anyway, um, I got to attend Stitchy Christmas yesterday. It was such a delight to see Elena and Olivia B, my favorite B sisters. Uh, and get to see a lot of NorCal stitchers who I, some of them I got to see over the summer, but many of them I haven't actually seen since like our last holiday gathering probably. Um, and it was just so much fun. And I mean, even there, there's really no way I could see them enough. Um, I got to meet several new people. Um, some of, some of them I talked to on Instagram and it was lovely to actually meet them in real life. So hello and hello to the rest of you who I met for the first time. It was wonderful. It's so good to like be with people who speak your language, you know? It was great. Um, and we did a little, uh, a little stitchy gift exchange. Um, so I am going to show you what I got. Um, I felt very, very special because we did it like white elephant style, you know? And my gift was one of the first ones, well, it was the first one opened, and Michelle got mine, and I love Michelle. I want to grow up to be like Michelle. Um, and it just made me feel feel great that she loved it, and she was excited about it, and so I did, I did a good job. Um, I picked out some color and cotton, uh, and then also a Lizzie Kate pattern, so it was a fun little Christmassy themed gift, and I was proud of it, and then I ended up stealing because there were there was minimal stealing that happened but it's part of the fun like one time I did a white elephant exchange and it was a small group it was only like six or seven people and everyone just like opened and kept what they had <laughs> so there's no stealing and it was just kind of like oh all right cool I have like a candle or something um okay but some some of the fun is in the stealing so I ended up stealing this gift from someone she came out just fine in the end. We all did because, you know, stitching gifts are always good gifts. Um, but I ended up with the Scarlet House Christmas in the Village. And look how cute that is. Um, it has a few of the colors with it. And I'm very excited. I was trying to see how many other colors I might have in my stash. We'll find out, but... I'm very excited to do that. Maybe I'll start it this this winter, this Christmas. I don't know if I have any fabric that would work, but I wonder if this would fit. The model was stitched on 40 count. I don't think so. Oh, it's 216 by 80. That's pretty big. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so that was very delightful, and I got to show off my finishes which I showed you the other day. I'm trying to see if there's anything else important in here. Not really. We got a lovely little gingerbread Christmas tree cookie as our party favor, and it was wrapped up so cute, and I ate part of it for breakfast, and it was lovely. And those girls know how to throw a party. It was, it was just such a delight, and I left, and my heart was so full, and I was so grateful that it, came, it coincided with my return to stitching because I think, I mean, I would have obviously gone no matter what and been excited to talk stitching no matter what but it it was definitely much more heartwarming that I was also like getting back into stitching and reconnecting with people and it was it was just so nice um 
it was great. I love stitchers. I, like I said, don't, maybe I said this, I don't know. I don't have any sort of organization planned for this video. I'm, I have a basket with some stuff. I have a bag with some stuff. I have a cat who's probably about to knock over my phone. So far, so good, but that's why you're tilted now. I have floss to show. I don't know, I'm just gonna like show you what I got. There's nothing in that bag. It's just a Q-snap, an empty Q-snap. Um, let's start. Please hold. I could have done some of this work ahead of time, but what fun would that be to be scripted and prepared? I will try to straighten you all. I'm sorry for the cat is. We're doing this on my phone because my computer can't handle filming without sunlight. Uh, so I don't know how much space I have. We're gonna see how long this video can be. Uh, I think I showed that already. Okay. I would show you this Stitch Trans shirt, but it's inside out and you know what the StitchCon logo is like. So I was gonna wear that in my StitchCon video, but I I'm a bad floss tuber, so I didn't. Let's see who's in here. Oh, this is Anda Forest Grew. What a beaut. Oh, Jen. Yesterday I saw delicious Jen, and we had our moon pieces together, and she had this needle minder on her moon piece that I made at StitchCon and was giving out and trading, and I have mine, which is great, because I thought I had lost it, or maybe get just given it away. Um, I got a pack of these buttons, little cat buttons to make needle minders. Very simple, but very fun and cute uh, to be able to share at StitchCon. And I match Jen's. Um, I have probably stitched on this a little bit since I saw you guys last. I don't know, because I haven't stitched. I haven't stitched all that much, but I have, I think this is like almost the whole first page, maybe a little of the second. I don't know, I'm stitching it one over one on 25 count, um, so it is a nice petite tiny little forest. Where did that frame go? Let's see how it looks in its new home. Obviously, it's not done. But I think that's gonna look great. Look how much more I have to stitch. Uh, but I'm hoping this will motivate me to work on it because I do really love this piece. Um, and it's in my moon bag, my mommily bag. God, it's so gorgeous. It's so perfect for this piece. Um, and it has its own box of floss because there's 8,000 colors. In this piece and this is at least 7,000 of them and that is a needle minder from delicious Jen as well my tiny leaf from my tiny forest uh, oh I still need to make a working copy of that anyway so that's one whip that we'll be working on I think this bag has like at least three projects in it let's see if I'm right Let's see who's in here. Um, oh yeah, look, I was doing this. This is gonna be a bit of a like a stash parade, a whip parade, whatever that is. Um, I am stitching Good Intentions by Kathy Barrick. I'm doing a color conversion. Uh, the colors were picked out for me by my sister and in my stocking last Christmas. And let's see. This is what it looks like if you haven't seen it. It says, I myself am made entirely of love, stitched together with good intentions. I actually don't know if I'm even gonna stitch the words on it. I really like this part um, and I don't love text and I don't know. I might, I will probably leave the text for the end and then see how I feel about it. Um, I'm definitely changing the dog to be an orange cat because of my jam. Uh, yeah. 
I would like to work on that one a little bit more. I'm stitching this on, I think like a 36 count linen that I randomly stole from my mother. She gave it to me, but I don't remember how willingly. So, oh, do you, okay, I'm gonna share this with you all. This is a card that I think is from my mom. Yeah, she sent me a card when she went on vacation to North Carolina. Um, and I turned it into my thread holder for this chart. I punched myself some holes. I don't think I bothered really keeping, yeah, I didn't even write down what colors they are, um, just because I'm, since I'm picking my own colors and I have a pretty limited palette and I'm just making it up as I go. But look what a fun little way to repurpose a greeting card. And when I read it, or when I stitch on this, I get to pull out this little note from my mother. And it's not really even, it's not like that sentimental of a note. <laughs> um, it's kind of just almost like something she maybe would text me with just like a little bit about her day and she's going to send some stamps to me, I guess. It, there's, <laughs> there's like nothing of substance in there, but it's just so sweet. Um, so that's my, uh craft reuse idea of the day for you. Oh. That's one way that I keep my threads organized for projects. Um, if I have like a really big project, I'll usually, I'll make like a real floss card if it's going to be like Anna Force Grew where you're switching colors a lot and actually I don't think I've made one for that now that I think about it. I don't know, I go back and forth between loving just having the floss on a card or on a bobbin and hating that system because you have to like put threads away and deal with loose things and I just, I don't know. I haven't found a system that I love overall, but it's fine. Uh, I only have two projects in this bag and the other one is... <laughs> my great progress on Strawberry Fields Forever. I haven't touched this since uh, March. And that's fine, I'll get to it. I really love this piece and I would like to keep working on it. I I think I'm, I'm stitching it on the called for linen, which is a week's linen, which is not my favorite. Confederate gray, maybe. Yeah. Conf so 32 count Confederate gray, which is like brown. So don't call it Confederate gray if it's brown. Um, Needle Minder by Delicious Jen, of course. And I am doing it in like partly the called for, partly DMC conversion, and partly just random threads that I've pulled out. Um, that was one of the first times I successfully color converted. Uh, I mean, I haven't really succeeded yet because I haven't stitched it yet, but in theory, I've successfully completed a color conversion that I'm very proud of. So that brings us to three whips total. I think that's it. So maybe I just, maybe right now I just have five whips. I have those three plus floral cat plus the blackbird piece. That's pretty good. I feel good about that. Um, I have another project that I'm planning to start as soon as I find the floss that I bought for it, but this is another one that um, Michelle, Mitch Stitch, and I purchased together. I'm going to show you the chart because that's all it is. There's no picture with it. Um, but, I mean, whatever. Uh, this is just a little snowman's best friend. It's a little snowman and a little snow dog. And then it comes with the cutest little buttons and the shop model. Michelle and I bought it because of the shop model. Um, it's it was stitched on, well, it was stitched on whatever it's called for or something, but it had little sticks sticking out of the frame for the snowman. So cute. Um, and it was just so, it was so adorable. And this was like five bucks, six, six bucks for the buttons essentially. And then, um, we both bought the called for weeks thread as well. And so at some point soon, I just need to find what I did with it. I'm going to make a little snowman. Um, he'd be a really cute ornament. He'd be a really cute tiny little framed piece. I don't know. We're gonna see. Take my total up to six whips, perhaps. Maybe while we're digging through stuff, we'll find the floss. Maybe. Hopefully. 
Uh, do you want to see other things that I purchased recently? Because there's a lot of them. Mm. Not this whole thing, but there's a lot of stuff in here. I wonder, while we're here, this is my box of finishes. And I think I've showed you everything in here, but we're just going to run through it again real fast because maybe there's something I forgot about. And also, I want to see my... I have my whales in here because uh, where they hang up, we currently have a Christmas piece hanging up instead. So this is my O-Whale. I love it so much. Uh, it's by Hands-On Design. It's adorable. It's stitched in the called for ghast. Um, and it's currently in this frame, which is fine. But can you imagine, ooh, look at those cute, cute whales. In this, are you kidding? Yes. Yes, that will work for me. Um, and this is like a cheapo Ikea frame. It means nothing to me. I did a very professional job on the frame. So that might be happening very, very soon. Um, I also have found a frame for this. Mom, if you're watching, this is going to be hopefully finished for Christmas. Um, but I found the perfect size, the perfect little frame for this ABC Shepherd's piece, Shepherd's Bush piece. Um, I stitched this in the two hours that my last video was uploading. So I think I showed it, or maybe it was two videos ago, because I maybe showed it in my last video. Not my last one, in May. I, I don't know. Uh, it's a real quick little stitch and it came with this mat board which I had to cut down to fit into this frame so it, I have to I have to finish it in here because I've ruined the mat board otherwise. Um, but like how cute! How cute is that? How perfect is that frame? It's from you know a thrift store for like a dollar. Uh, one I bought a long time ago just because it's a great weird size and you always buy the weird size frames because you'll need them. Anyway, um, who else is in here? Let's, let's see what we got. Oh, we have good old House of Cooking. Cute. I'm going to make that into a wall hanging. Um, I have a vision for it. I will share more later. I have my moon ladies. I have a frame for these ladies too. Uh, just like a silver 5x7 frame. And I was planning to hang them up in my vanity, but I might instead have... Uh, like a moon wall in my bedroom with all my moon stitching. Let's see. I have my chalkboard mandala. Wait, check this out. Are you excited? Yes! It's perfect! Let's make it fit a little bit better. Oh, that is going to be delightful. Are you kidding? So that will be great. Um, oh, and then I have my Harry Potter class schedule stitch along that I abandoned very quickly because it was the worst design fail of all time. It's a complicated story. It's just, you know, it's a lesson in a lot of things. <laughs> um, there's a wonderful group on Facebook that has become a source of charting your own classes and some of them are, I mean all of them are really really great. Um, I don't really know if I care enough to use them and just stitch it myself with new designs because it's just such a sad frustrating piece um, that she just I mean, it's a great, like, simple design if you are a beginning stitcher and if you like the really minimal design. I do think that, like, the individual squares were very underwhelming. I do think that the design has charted once it's the whole thing. At least kind of fits together, sort of. There, there's, It's not super cohesive as a design, but it looks a little less empty and incomplete when it's at least all there. I don't know. So I st stitched my... McGonagall cat to look like Oscar Pepper and I'm very proud of her but I also don't have Oscar Pepper anymore so at first I was just gonna keep um, keep that like cut that part out but I don't know if that's really worth the amount of fabric it would involve wasting so I'll probably rip this out at some point to be able to use this gorgeous fabric this is on Dusk the tags probably still on here yeah, Dusk by Picture This Plus, so it's gorgeous and I can find a use for it. 
I just don't feel like undoing it. Um, so those are all my finishes. Most of them I finished last year, but I have, now have that whole new set of finishes that we will add to this box right now because I plan to FFO all of this very soon. Hopefully. Okay. Do you want to see some purchases? I was hoping you would say yes. Um, I currently have a haphazard system for organizing my stitching things. Um, I have patterns in these binders. I have a few patterns just kind of wedged in. Um, I have patterns and kits and things that I've kitted up in here. So let's just run through this. Again, some of this you've seen, some of this you haven't. Some of this includes things that um, I have received as gifts over the last several months to which I'm excuse me, for which I'm very, very grateful and apologize that I haven't been able to share and appreciate you via video. Um, and apologies if I didn't send you a thank you card. I did them intermittently. I've been responding to mail intermittently and I, I'm hoping to get back on track with that, but I'm also just, it is what it is. Um, so I'm just going to run through this. Some of these I've purchased, some of them I've kitted, some of them you've seen, etc., etc. We'll just see. Um, this first one was actually given to me by Olivia. <laughs> when we last met up at Needle in a Haystack, she brought me this Paddington, Book of Paddington Patterns, which I am so very grateful for. Um, I love Paddington, as we've established. I actually have charted up a little Paddington piece myself that I plan to stitch, and maybe I will um, get some further inspiration from this book. It's just, oh, I love Paddington. These are very 80s. They could use a little sprucing up, but they are very, very cute, and I absolutely will be stitching something from that. I also have, from my beloved cat lady stitcher, um, this Margaret Sherry collection of Astro Cats. So they're the little astrological signs for the chubby, chubby cats, and they're so cute. Uh, I love Margaret Sherry's cats. I think they are absolutely amazing. That is totally jam. That mischievous look. Oh my goodness. Um, what is jam? He was born in, I have to look it up, like late March, early April. Hmm. I'll see. I'll do a little, I'll do a little research to remember. Um, so this is a calendar from 2007. Um, and I haven't stitched any of them yet, but obviously I want to stitch all of them. I also really love this little rock climber. He's so cute. Um, Gemini is very cute. It's a fat little gray cat. I'm a Gemini. Um, with her, her flower pot. I also really like Aquarius is a little scientist, and he's got a little beaker. Um, so maybe I'll stitch that for one of the doctors in my life. Maybe I won't. There's another really fat orange cat with a little paintbrush. Oh, they are just all so cute. So I'll find, I'll find uses for that for sure. So thank you so much, Lauren. You are a delight. Um, oh, and I have a few charts that my roommate at StitchCon graciously gifted. I uh, was fortunate enough to share a room with a stitcher from Kentucky, my beloved home state, um, who I, you know, found via the Facebook group and I was like, hey, I don't have a roommate because my family, my sister was going to come up um, and ended up not doing that. And so it, it worked out really, really well. And then I hardly saw her because I got up really early and we just, I just, we would like miss each other where she'd already be asleep or I would be asleep. So it was a bummer I didn't get to hang out with her more, but she left me the sweetest gift and I, she totally found my one, two, three, sti one, two, three stitch wish list, which it took me a while to put together. But I, as I was looking through these, I was like, oh, I really want to stitch this and I really want to stitch this and I really want to stitch this. How did she know? It's not that hard. If you have an email address, you can figure it out pretty well. Um, so... <laughs> I want to stitch this this winter if I can get my act together. Um, this is Ice Tea by Midnight Stitching, and it's a snowman in a teacup. Oh, it's so cute! And he's holding the he's holding the tag of the tea bag, and it says Ice Tea. I love it. I love a nice little little pun. Um, she gave me a couple others. They're probably mixed in here somewhere. Um, but thank you so much. I 
have said thank you, but I'm going to say it again six months later. You are a delight. Um, I also received a lovely little birthday gift from uh, my friend Jenny, including The Library by Little House Needleworks, and I love this piece. Little One was stitching this, and I just kept being like, ooh, I want it. I need to see. I haven't kept up with um, Home Today on the Homefront videos. With all videos, I've been watching them really intermittently, so I've caught random updates. Um, but I don't know if you've finished this, and I need to go find out. Um, but I, I just love it so much. It's got four different genres. I love books, and I would like to stitch this very soon. I think I'll probably change the romance one because I don't read romance. Um, but I think little one read. She changed one of them too. I need to go look that up. Um, so maybe I'll change it to like fantasy. That could be fun. Middle school Abby read a ton of fantasy. Adult Abby doesn't read as much. Um, I do a lot of historical fiction and like modern contemporary fiction, whatever that is. I'm looking up at my books above my closet right now, not just looking to the heavens. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Maybe mythology would be cool. Hmm. I would like to start that very soon. I want to start all these things. Being at Olivia's and looking through all of the things that she has in progress or that she has fully kitted and maybe like a few stitches in or barely started and like she just did her 31 starts for Halloween. It just gave me such freedom. Like it makes me really happy to have a project that I love in any form of uh, readiness to stitch. A stitch readiness if you will. Um, and like, that's totally fine. If I don't touch it for years, if I open it up and don't love it anymore and give it to somebody else who will love it, great. If I start stitching it and it takes me 20 years to finish it, great. Like, whatever makes you happy, stitch what makes you happy. So it just made me, it made me feel a lot better about all of this and I'm excited to, it's just fun to look through. It's fun to remember all of these things. Um, you all already knew that. I think this one is also from Laura, um, this little house needleworks train station. This is one of their, um, Main Street, no, sorry, Hometown Holiday series, and I just, I just love it. Um, my house in Kentucky that I grew up in was a couple miles from some train tracks, and you couldn't hear every train, but especially, like, in the middle of the night, um, if there was one that was real loud and had a real aggressive, you know, whistling, uh, it's just kind of part of the backdrop of my, of my childhood, and it makes me happy to, I don't know, it just looks it just looks so cute and cozy. I want to start that too. Um, let's see. I'm gonna set those aside. I picked up a couple Kathy Barrick charts that she's retiring. She listed them when when she retires them. She lists them half price on her Etsy. Um, and so I went through and wanted to pick out ones that I wanted to stitch. There were several that I would want to stitch, but I bought these when I was not stitching at all so I was trying to be conservative of like what did I actually see myself stitching um someday and so I bought Stitching Girls because I really love that Good Intentions piece and these have a similar aesthetic and th I thought I could stitch one or two of those and have it hanging up nearby that would be cute and then I of course bought Moon Dance because the moon and because, like, look at those peacocks. Trisha just did a video, and she has this. So, Trisha, we're going to stitch it together. Hope you're ready. I just love it. Let's see. Who else is in here? Oh, here's a few things that I bought at Keepsakes during StitchCon. Um, so, I went to I went to Keepsakes two different times. And it's very overwhelming because it's, it's a beautiful shop. They have models for days. I was tempted to buy so many things just because I saw the model and loved it, even if there are things that I don't think I would have actually enjoyed stitching. So I didn't buy too much when I was there. Um, on one trip I bought, I forget which, maybe I didn't go twice. Did I just go once? Maybe I just went once, but I was there for a while because we were like waiting for a shuttle and I wasn't in a rush, so I just hung around. I think I only went once. I think I'm mixing up what I bought at the trunk show. Give me a moment. Yep, okay. So I bought the zippity doo da piece and fabric and 
thread. Um, and then I also <laughs> picked up a couple impulse purchases in line um, because I saw this was stitched and it was just, it was too, it was just too good. It's a little cardinal with a little umbrella and little rain boots and I love him. He's so cute. He makes me so happy. Um, that is by Eileen... I don't know how to say your name, Eileen. Eileen Gurak. It's cute. Rainy Day Cardinal. And I love cardinals because I'm from Kentucky and that is our state bird, which is not that unique to Kentucky. But I was in line and then I looked to the left and I saw three National Park Mill Hill Santas and I said, what? What? I love national parks. I think they're very important to protect and patron. Um, and I picked up the Yosemite Santa. I have not been to Yosemite in my six years of living in California, but I will get there and I have decided that I will not stitch this until I visit. So I need to visit so that I can start it. I've also never done a Mill Hill before. Um, and he's got... There are a ton of beads in here, but it doesn't actually look like there's that many beads in the pattern. So... We'll figure that out. They also have a Yellowstone Santa and a Grand Canyon Santa. And I think I got Michelle, Bendy Michelle, to buy one of these. And I think she already got rid of it. Like, sold it. Which is good. Good for you. Um, so I love when I get to feel powerful and influence people to buy things. <laughs> um, and then at the trunk show at StitchCon, there, were, there was a delightful trunk show. I bought some fabric and floss from Color and Cotton because it was very nice to be able to see it in person that thread is. Uh, and then I, of course, had to buy an, a Works by ABC pattern while I was there because Arlene had a trunk show and I love her and I love all of her patterns, but I especially was feeling Halloween-y and so I got the Skeleton Mosaic. I had Arlene sign it for me because, duh, um, and I got to sit at Arlene's table and become best friends and it was just beautiful and wonderful and I'm so glad to have this and so proud of her. I don't know if you have heard but she has recently been picked up for distribution by Hoffman which is a big deal. So go to your stores and ask them to start carrying works by ABC. Not yet. I don't think it's quite ready yet but very very soon it's in progress. So I, ooh, maybe I'll put this on desk. I don't even have to rip out my stitching yet. I can just stitch on the other side. Smart. Um, and then I also, because I love the moon, picked up, yes, Shadow Moon by Hands On Design. It says, the shadow moon on Hallow's Eve lights the way so ghosts can leave. Oh, and Elena, if I had gotten that chartreuse fabric, I could have stitched this on it. So, <sighs> I'm not bitter about it. God, it's just so pretty. And I love that it's, it's basically just stitched in gray and white. A little bit of orange. And then obviously she stitches on this fabulous green fabric, which I don't have, so I need to get myself to an LNS. Ooh, I can go visit, uh, I'll go to, what is it called? The Finishing Touch when I'm home for Christmas. That will be fun. Oh, we're already at 33 minutes. We have a lot more to go through. Um, I love doing this all random and out of order because then I like have no memory of what's in here. I looked through some of this the other day, so it's not like I've totally forgotten all of it, but it's just fun to see what, what comes out. I, throughout the, kind of as I was losing my stitching bug, I was buying a lot of things on stash unload and stash unloading. I think maybe I was like trying to reignite my stitching, but I didn't really have the mental energy for stitching, but I always have the mental energy for online shopping. And I found this lovely little delight. It's Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables is one of my favorite books. I love the original 1985 movie, miniseries, whatever it was. Um, it is just perfection. I love it dearly. I also love the new Netflix adaptation. Yes, it's a little unsettling because they take some liberties with the, their interpretation. It's not like a, you know, page to page adaptation. They move some timelines around. They have some different characters and different things happen. It's got a different tone, but it is so good. It's so tragic and haunting and wonderful. And it's very realistic 
in a way that the movie the movie is like very happy. Anne's life was not very happy. There was a lot of darkness in there. And they do such a good job of portraying that and I just I love it so much. Uh, so there are two seasons of it on Netflix. Highly recommend if you are a fan of Anne and I would like to stitch this and be able to hang it above my Anne books which are in the living room um, but I have all eight, all eight of the Anne books and I don't have the original copies. When I was a kid one of my mom's friends came to visit and she brought me an Anne of Green Gables collection with the first three books and she brought my sister uh, a Sharon Creech collection with a few books and I remember that age-wise they probably should have been switched um, like the Anne of Green Gables books are kind of advanced like to actually read them all and not like a child translation I think I was like third grade or something at the time so they were just like not quite I wasn't quite ready for them and so I read all of my sister's books like Walk Two Moons and Chasing Redbird I think was one of them and um, Blue Mobility, The Wanderer, these are all Sharon Creech books. She's a delightful middle grade author. Um, but those were more appropriate to my age and reading level and mine were like really long and hard. Uh, so it took me a really long time until I finally got to them and I remember being really jealous that my sister had books that were like immediately fun and I was like, these books aren't gonna be fun for a long time. But eventually I finally read them and loved them and love them to this day. I have never read the entire series all the way through so I keep intending to do that. I think I've gotten through book four or five out of eight, but I will definitely stitch Green Gables and read away. I have several other L.M. Montgomery books on the same shelf. I also have multiple copies of Anne and Green Gables because you need it. Um, okay, this I purchased my last visit to Needle in a Haystack. I was so proud of myself because I needed a skein of silk to finish Zippity Doodah. And I was going for a meetup and I was like, all I'm going to buy is this silk unless I have like, I absolutely have to buy something kind of a moment. And I had one of those moments. So this is a tra-la-la -la piece. I don't know what it's called exactly because it's not in English, but I don't know if you can tell, but that lady has a top knot. So I had to buy it. Um, so it's a lady and a child and they have bunnies and it's in Christmas colors, but it looks very spring-like. No, because that kind of looks like snow. But it looks like there's, oh no, it's a chicken. <laughs> but like, they, she's got her like hat, she looks kind of like an elf, so I'm gonna take out the bunnies and make it way more Christmassy, and it'll be a nice Christmas piece. Plus she's got a top knot. So I bought that, and I think that was, those are the only two things that I bought. And I even had uh, a credit from the store's like customer loyalty, whatever so I got like ten dollars off or something and then I felt even better about my purchase because it made me feel like I wasn't really spending money but in reality I had already spent a lot of money the last time I was there because the last time I was there I bought that gorgeous blue fabric that I showed you my moonlight finish on and I also bought myself a birthday present in the form of life after death by long dog samplers which I have loved forever because of that whale I don't know what it is, but whales and stitching, it just really gets me, and I need it in my life. And I really, I like this one a lot better than Death by Cross Stitch, I think because of the whale, and I like the text in this better. Death by Cross Stitch has, has two alphabets. I don't remember if there are other verses or quotes or anything in it. Um, but this one has two bits of text. Um, one says, love is the thread that men's worn hearts, but it has just hearts as the, instead of the word hearts, so I like that. And then it also says, I sigh not for beauty, but grant me kind providence, virtue, and health. So I also really liked that. I thought that's a great sentiment. And, you know, I've been intimidated for a while of picking out what color I would do this in. Because my neutral self wants to do it in black or gray on white or cream. And that is fine. It's gorgeous like that. But it's also not quite what I wanted. So we were walking around the store and I found my new favorite floss. And I... Had to buy some. My new favorite floss ever is the Gentle Out ugh, Gentle Art Storm Clouds. It's not showing up super great, but it's this lovely greenish, grayish beauty. And so they had only a few skeins of it, and Elena and I split it up between us. It's just gorgeous storm clouds, but it's 
just the loveliest green. It's not showing up well at all. But you can just trust me. And then I was like, well, okay, I'm going to stitch it in storm clouds because I love it. And I did a lot of wandering around and picking up different things. And I got, I had a lot of help from my stitching friends. Um, and I ended up selecting Bayberry, which is also not showing up well at all. That's a little better. So there are two greens. This one is significantly darker and kind of grungier. And this one is a little bluer. Um, and then I also at StitchCon picked up as much inkwell as I could find. My favorite color in cotton color. Oh, it's gorgeous. And so I'm going to be stitching it in those three colors. And that is actually showing up very well. Oh, that is just so pretty. I don't know exactly how I'm going to break it up. It's going to mostly be in greens, obviously. The whale is going to be in this gray. And I'm just going to see what happens. Um, these are both pretty variegated, so I think overall it will look hopefully fantastic. And you might be wondering, what are you going to stitch it on? Well, my friends, I am taking my first plunge into 40 count linen and I picked up some Picture This Plus Bramble with the help of my beloved stitching friends. Someone was like, Abby, this is your fabric. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it is. I don't remember who it was. Probably Olivia. Um, Olivia's definitely the one who talked me into 40 count and I'm excited for the challenge. I am nervous. I invested in a fat half because that's this piece is huge and it needs it. Uh, whew. But I'm so excited. That is going to be amazing. And I like that it's not quite, it's not like I'm doing it in just one color, but it will have a, a monochromatic-ish appearance of the greenish gray and I'm into it. So because of this lovely purchase, I got that next pattern for very, very little because of my discount. Um, on Stash Unload, I also got one of the few Lizzie Kates that I love and want to stitch. Lizzie Kate is adorable. I think her patterns are really cute. They're not really my style, and I... I don't know, I just, I haven't gotten super into her. I mean, I, but sometimes it's just, it's just what you need. Um, but this is the Green Flip It series. Oh, and all together they make the cutest little thing. And so we have Keep Our Air Clean, Eat Locally, Plant a Tree, Ride a Bike, Save Water, be kind to animals. So all of those are things that I love and value. And I really want to make this for a child in my life, but I don't have anyone who that applies to at the moment. So I might just make it for myself and I might just have them for a while. Um, but I really love the series and I got, I found them on stash and load for like 10 bucks for the whole set. Yes, please. That was a great find. Ooh, we have a lot more to go. Um, oh, here it is. This is the chart for Moonlight. That's going in my stash and load pile. Um, let me see what else is actually new to show you. Because I don't want to take years for this video. Just, just one year. Uh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. I really should just do my own mania in December. Decemania. That doesn't work. Okay. I also have several things that I got at StitchCon at the freebie table. Um, or other charts that I have been gifted. Nope. I think these are all from the freebie table. Or from uh, Michelle's Alzheimer's sale at the retreat. Um, she had a donation table, um, and so I picked up a few things there as well and made my donation for Alzheimer's research. Um, let me show you what I got. I got this lovely little Plum Cottage sampler. Not my style, but I think this might be what I stitch for StitchCon next fall. Next fall. The Smalls Exchange for StitchCon in the summer. It comes with the linen and the buttons, and I have purple thread from Color and Cotton. I subscribed to both Color and Cotton and Victorian Motto for a while. 
I switch my color and cotton to every other month because that's a really nice option of saving money. Um, and then I also just put my Victoria Motto on hold. So they're both on hold for a little bit because I wanted to stop buying thread when I wasn't stitching. But the whole time I was not stitching, <laughs> I was buying, I was on these monthly subscriptions. And now I've started stitching again, but I've paused the subscriptions. But they'll start back up in January. I hope. Anyway, uh, the last month that I had color and cotton, I got three different purples. And so I'm definitely going to bust some of those out for this because DMC purples are not great. Color and Cotton and Victorian Motto both do excellent purples if you are stuck. Um, this I also picked up from Michelle's table. It is uh, Soda Stitch the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is not a huge part of my childhood but I do just it's just a pretty it's a pretty chart. Um, I think I don't know. Uh, coffee Stitcher is working on this right now, I think. We'll see. It's not high on my holiday stitching list, but I'll, I'll keep keep it handy for a while. I got this from the freebie table, and I think it ended up being from uh, Diana. It is Kismet. It's a moon, so obviously I needed it. Those will go on my moon wall. I got this lovely little time to stitch book. It has a whole bunch of different herbs and plants. Maybe it's all herbs. Um... So I don't have an immediate plan for it, but I love, I love plants and herbs. This one is uh, the world's afar tree and it is printed in Berkeley. And so I obviously needed to buy it. Um, and yeah, or not buy it, but it, it's from the freebie table. I also got Gara Alice. I love it, especially the queen, and also the Cheshire cat, and also the rabbit. I love them all. Um, I got someone, there were several magazines and pages ripped out of magazines on the tables as well, and so I picked up this lovely little peacock mandala, because I love that. I love a good monochromatic piece. I got this nice little, I don't rem yeah, I got this nice little ornament, and look, oh, it also has that ornament. So this one is an ink circles, the other one is a random one, but I liked both of them. Someone brought this to me. <laughs> Cat personalities in cross stitch, yes. I will take that. Um, a little Noel piece, again, not high on my Christmas list, but how adorable would that be? Another book of plants, the nature collection. I haven't, I don't even know if I looked through to pick out what I wanted to stitch. There was one in particular. Maybe it was just this fern. I don't know. But it comes with these little pre-printed mat, decorated, decorated mats as well. McKenna brought this over to me, the solar system from uh, Cross Stitcher January 2018. Yes, I need that. Add it to my moons. Um, I got this little bird feeder. It doesn't have a picture. Um, and then I also got this bookmark chart because I have not stitched a cross stitch bookmark but maybe I will especially that orange cat and maybe this lighthouse for my mother I don't know why not um uh, I think that's all I got from the freebie table I also brought a whole stack of things because I'm a good participant um and then StitchCon gave us a lot of really nice freebie charts um with you I'm home by hands-on designer this one is Snowflower Diaries, I think. You are so loved. A Barbara Anna. I was super excited about this one, Stone Street Stitchworks. I have to show you the cat. Oh, he's so cute right now. We're gonna wake him up a little bit. I have to pick up the phone because I can't turn the camera around. Oh, I woke him up a little already. I apologize for this camera work, but how cute is he? You got a sneak peek at how messy all my stuff is right now. Anyway, we got a whole bunch of freebies from there. Oh, I also picked up the Stitching Lady. Cute. Um, I have my StitchCon logo. We also got a skein of Buckeye Scarlet. That was very fun. And we also got some Krynek. I don't know what I did with mine. Okay. The rest of this are kits that you've seen, um, purchases that you've seen before, so we're not going to go through it, but we are going to go through some things that I recently 
kitted up uh, and I am excited to start them soon. So I showed this was a chart sent to me by uh, Melly Ellie Stitches and I had picked out that I was going to stitch it on this pink fabric that Bendy Michelle sent me ages ago with another, uh, I won one of her giveaways and she included some fabric. Um, and I thought, you know, those colors are nice, but I think I want to mix it up. And so I mixed it up. <laughs> All sorts of colors. I think I have a few extras because I wasn't quite sure what I would end up wanting and I don't quite have a color for jam yet, so he's gonna, he's gonna need to be in there as well, but like, that's fun. I'm excited. And I also have all of the floss and fabric ready to make my sledding cats. So that is up on my Christmas list. Maybe at the top of my Christmas wintry stitching list, I hope. Um, then I have another chart that Laura gave me at StitchCon. Oops, Kathy Barrick, the tea keeper. Uh, so I went through my stash and picked out, I'm just gonna show you on here. I had a random linen that I think McKenna sent to me, and then I picked out some of the called for and some of the called for conversions, and then just colors that I liked. Um, this one has a lot of brown, uh, and I, I guess I pulled out one brown, but I changed her dress to be a lot more vibrant, and the cat obviously I'm going to change to be like jam. So I'm going to start that soon, maybe. And then one last one that I kitted up for myself is this, this is the day that the Lord has made uh, by a country cottage. And I don't have fabric pulled for this one yet. I don't think. Um, but I did pick out some colors, kind of colors that were called for, some of them not. I'm not gonna show you all these because I don't think you really care until I stitch it. And it it looks beautiful, but there's a lot of Victorian motto in here and a couple of random uh, gentle arts as well. And I love this song and I want to hang this up where I can see it every day. So I'm going to get working on that soon. And I think that's about it. I think. Let me check. Let me check. So that was another hour of talking to you about random stitching, all the stitching. Um, I probably have more around to show you. I definitely have other charts that I've acquired, um, other things that I'm planning to start soon. For example, Mother Moon, she's ready to go. Mother of God is ready to go. Harry Catter is ready to go. <laughs> uh, this herb uh, floral, herb panel, that's what it is. That one's ready. Oh, you can't see, but that's a sun and moon piece. Poo sticks. Um, so those are all kitted and ready. And then I have several others in here that I really would love to stitch soon or start soon. Um, for example, the sun and moon sampler. This was going to be my birthday start this year, but I didn't get anywhere near that. I love this piece. It is a French design. If you want more information, let me know. Um, I kept the Spirit of Quilting Angel for myself, even though I don't quilt yet. Um, but I thought she was just the cutest, and her little work basket was cute, and her little cat is cute. So she's not super high on my list either. I have another Blackbird Mildred's Garden House. I would love to stitch this. Um, I would love to stitch this and add the verse that's on the back of my grandmother's uh, prayer cards from her funeral. I think that would be lovely. Her name was Mildred. She liked her garden. I think that would be a lovely piece. And I am coming around to Blackbird more and more. Thanks to my stitchy crew. Uh, that's it, friends. That was a great time. We're going to stop there. I have all the rest of the stuff that I could share with you, but that's the, that's the bulk of it. Um, thank you all for your well wishes and all the things. I love you greatly, and I'll talk to you hopefully soon. Not as soon as this was. But soon.